to an all-new season of Out There with Cisco and Cricket. This is season two. Season two actually took place uh, back in 2020, so we were uh, smack dab in the midst of the global uh, coronavirus pandemic, and uh, things were just a little bit different back then. Season two starts off uh, in Strasbourg in the courthouse square, and I'm waiting to get picked up uh, by a longtime friend of mine. Uh, his name is Dominic. All right, I'm here with Dom now on Main Street. Good friend of mine. He's gonna take me to a good local spot that we've been to many times before. Dominic's a really cool guy. He's a nature enthusiast, um, just like I am. Dominic and I share a lot of the same interests, also including uh, cryptozoology and um, the mystery of Sasquatch or the existence of extraterrestrial phenomenon, uh, things of that nature. But it's a good jumping off point to uh, illustrate some of the natural habitat around the local area uh, that I think are a prime spot to support the life of a large primate such as the Gigantopithecus. What do you think, Dom? I think there's a good chance we won't see one today. <laughs> <laughs> so my investigation today is going to take us to the Appalachian Trail and Delaware Water Gap. It's an absolutely uh, gorgeous uh, place to visit. It's an absolutely uh, great trail. Um, it goes uh, all the way to New Jersey. Um, you could actually see New Jersey from several outlooks all along the trail. It's really nice. It's great for locals. And the thing about it is that it's also attractive to people from who are out of town. Hiking the Appalachian Trail in Delaware Water Gap is an absolute joy. And it's really wonderful uh, to have it so readily available. Um, people from New Jersey and New York tend to come here on the weekends. And uh, right now it's going to be very crowded in the Delaware Water Gap. One of the most re remote spots here in the uh, Delaware Water Gap and there's nowhere to park. 2020 quarantine, social distancing, hashtag. You can always find another place to park if, you, if you're smart and you, and you know what you're looking for. Dominic and I have a secret parking location. We're going to park there today and enter along the back trail. Uh, it's a lesser known trail and if you continue along this way it actually goes to a lesser known uh, kind of a hidden waterfall which is really nice so uh, our investigation today is going to go along this trail towards this waterfall and see what video footage we can get looks like we found a little luck with some parking kind of a little lesser known spot of the delaware water gap trail um so i guess uh, we're going to really be coming in hot here on this uh alternate route but then again, that's the last thing a Sasquatch is going to expect, so. <laughs> Sneak up on him. We gonna get him today. Okay, so we're here at the entrance now. At the Appalachian Trail in Delaware Water Gap. We're doing a quick little hike through. Probably not all the way to the top. It should give you a good idea of the type of terrain that's, uh, readily available for any type of wildlife coming through this area or any uh, potential Sasquatch that might live nearby. So uh, hopefully we don't run into too many people because that's annoying. Um, people from New Jersey and New York tend to come here on the weekends 
and those tend to be the more populated days. But it should be a good day for uh, for a hike, so it's gonna be a good one. Let's uh, let's get to it. All right, so just as I expected, wasn't long until we came across some people, but it's a beautiful day. Oh, we're going across there. Well, if we have to do it, we have to do it. Not too treacherous, but as you can see, a fair share of obstacles already. Oh my goodness. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, not too bad. I'm always freaking out and stuff like this because of uh, my expensive video gear. God forbid something happens, some shit out of luck. Woo, made it across that one. Nice little way to begin our journey. Shortly upon entering the trail, Dominic and I uh, came across a tree that had been uh, broken in half. And whether it's from rot or from insects or from uh, damage from the wind or from a storm, uh, I always think it's important to stop and just uh, document with a couple of photos and a little bit of video footage. Oh, we got ourselves a nice fresh little tree break here. What the hell is this from, huh? Some wind. Perhaps a sun. Probably not. This seems a little low. Seems a little splintered. Not necessarily consistent with what uh, you'd expect with a Sasquatch break. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic's a really fun guy. He loves uh, having a good time. He knows how to have a good time. He knows how to joke around. And uh, it's just an absolute delight uh, spending any type of uh, time with him. So he's a perfect uh, guy that you would want to be in the woods with when you're uh, conducting an investigation like this. Who's got the big foot now, buddy? Um, I don't think any uh, trees that I've ever really found have been broken by Sasquatch, but I think it's important to at least document uh, what trees haven't been broken by Sasquatch. And then this way, if you come across a tree um, and its break is beyond um, logic or uh, description, then or you can't rationalize why the tree would be broken. You can compare it with other examples. And so I like to uh, keep a catalog of uh, footage and images every time I come across a broken tree. And so this way, um, if I do come across one one day, perhaps, uh, then I can actually um, use a process of elimination. And it's important to have uh, that data, I think, uh, recorded. I don't know if the Gigantopithecus is so advanced as that they're creating string or ropes or anything like that to uh, natural, mostly to natural. To build any type of structures. With them, it seems. Natural. Any type of housing. We're coming up now onto waterfalls or over here. You can hear them, I'm sure, at this point. Get this other camera up. It's gonna be the trees. That's great. It's a beautiful little spot to be. This is a really nice place. And just as we're approaching, you could uh, actually hear the waterfall, the sound of the running water, the sound of the rushing water, uh, before we even get there. And this is nice and it's exciting. You can smell it uh, almost, the mist of the water in the air. And just as we come around the corner, and then suddenly there it is. And it's, uh, it's really just a nice waterfall. And it's not uh, overly big. It's not, there's nothing particularly impressive about it. 
the fact that it's hiding here and it's continuously running mostly through the summer, it's just a nice little treat and not so secluded that you would think an animal like Giganto, Sasquatch, whatever, would come through here. Um, really gives you a sense of how isolated things really get quite quickly when you just start to wander into the woods. I'm getting some great footage of this now. Oh yeah, I love this waterfalls. There's a little trail that uh, leads down to the waterfall and a little pool of water uh, that collects there uh, before it runs off in the rest of the uh, creek or the stream. would describe this body of water and um, no amount of footage really does it justice it really is just a, a low-key kind of hidden nice place to be in the summertime to uh, escape you know the direct sunlight and to be around uh, the coolness of the, the mist of the water and the and the waterfall and the running water uh, so um, this is actually just a really nice place to be right now I've climbed down to the bottom here uh, and it's just absolutely beautiful and, and it's so remote, so much more remote than you would think seeing it from up top. But this is the same waterfall I shot just from up here uh, and there's, it's just, it's hard to fathom how, how much space there really is in a small park like Delaware Water Gap uh, National Park. But there really are so many small nooks and crannies and so much deep vegetation that I personally myself think that an uh, animal like Sasquatch would have no problem just existing out here for decades without anybody seeing them, but that's not necessarily everybody else's opinion, uh, just, just the opinion of one man who's right. If I were to have told you a few years ago that Sasquatch and extraterrestrials were using transdimensional rifts or portals to travel from one place in time uh, to another, then you might call me crazy. But uh, within recent years, there's been a, an uptick and an increase um, in, in the public eye and the public awareness and the public intrigue uh, concerning extraterrestrial UFO uh, phenomenon. And uh, now there's actually television programs who focus uh, primarily on exactly what I've been focusing on now for years, which is um, proving definitively the existence of portals that are, that are either being opened by uh, creatures uh, of this world from here or for some some place else. But uh, whether it's an extraterrestrial presence or something supernatural, uh, I think the proof speaks for itself that the uh, general public is now more than ever uh, willing to accept these ideas that a few years ago would have been considered more radical or more out there. After having studied this phenomenon my whole life, I'm actually a pretty big believer in the Sasquatch and extraterrestrial phenomenon. And I will actually go so far as to say that I believe Sasquatch and extraterrestrials use transdimensional portals um, to to enter from one place uh, into another, whether it's from another dimension, another reality, or another place um, in, in space and time. But I, I actually do believe in some of these uh, more far out there theories. And that's where uh, my show really uh, takes off is in this theory of um, the more, more extreme aspects of cryptozoology and um, the existence of phenomenon that normally people would say is out there and a uh, phenomenon that if I told you uh, theories about a few years ago, you might uh, think would be crazy. And uh, nowadays, um, people are more readily uh, willing to, um, to accept these ideas, these radical ideas.
might be little roadblocks. I mean, just get in here. Any type of animal can be a bear. One of the downsides of uh, coming to a location like this is that it is actually pretty you know, populated. And we're reaching a part of the trail now that's uh, accessible to um, everyone, uh, anyone with general knowledge um, of the Appalachian Trail is going to stick to these trails. And so we're coming across more and more people, more and more nature enthusiasts, which is great. This is actually a really uh, great way to meet people. And uh, maybe one day I'll actually start interviewing people. And uh, I'm sure they all have their own stories to tell. Uh, what goes on in these woods, uh, strange noises, strange sights that you see uh, during the day or at night. Time. But that's um, the whole fun of it, and that's the whole world. But today I think it's um, safe to say that we're going to call this investigation a wrap for the day and uh, plan better um, and uh, for the next episode. And it's just, um, hopefully, continue this investigation. That's the show. Join me next time as I continue to search northeastern Pennsylvania for any sign or evidence of Sasquatch. Until then, see you out there.